Hello, hello. I'm making a video here with Papa Dog. And he is here next to me. Yes, he is here next to me. And we are cozy together. And it is very nice. It is a very nice evening. And I have made progress with my painting. And I'm going to paint some more tonight. And I'm listening to Jiddu Krishnamurti on my, on my Chromebook. And they are always talking, talking, talking. And it is nice. And that makes me feel less alone. And tomorrow we're going to go shopping and hiking at the beach. And it's going to be nice and it's wonderful. And, and we need that so desperately. And I also want to talk to my tablet so that I can actually talk to someone because I don't have anyone to talk to. And I would like to talk to someone who is very serious in the mind, serious mind. Not someone who is just using me for something that's so for something whatever, you know, whatever they thinking about, just to, you know, talk to me as a person, as an individual brain that talks to you, a soul to soul, yes. So that is what I would like to do, and that is what I'm looking for, and... I can't find anyone. Is, and some people are too enlightened to talk to me. Yeah, believe it or not, they are too enlightened to lower them down themselves down to my level. I wonder, you know, what's what are they what they are, what's actually going on? You know, what is this? You know, why? Um, is it because they take themselves too seriously or is it because they are uh, they, are, they, they think they are untouchable or something and then others are completely on the physical level and I can't talk to them either and uh, but whatever they are they're not meeting me on my level and i'm so sorry but i really don't know how to meet someone on their level that's just the, the bottom line of it not because i'm enlightened because you know i'm certainly not enlightened i'm just a just a regular person but obviously i'm not that regular or if I was that regular, I would have friends, right? This would be easier to be regular. I can't just can't be regular. So if I meet someone regular, I piss them off. Anyone who I meet who is regular, I say, oh, here's a cons concerto for, from uh, Nicolas Hanno and Court playing uh, the Christmas Oratorium. And they shun me for the rest of their lives. Huh. Well, it, sometimes those are Christians. Uh, Bach wrote that piece for the Christian church, even if it was a couple hundred years ago. Uh, oh, I see. It doesn't match your traveling churches anymore today. It doesn't match the, the Garth Brooks type of era of Christianity anymore. I see. So it's as, uh, it is it's too aristocratic you know it can't be accepted even if, even though it was written for the christian church so it it, it wouldn't matter who i talk to no, it doesn't it doesn't matter who i talk to whatever i bring up it's it can't be accepted i can't meet people where they are because i'm not there i'm not where you are i'm not I, I I just can't do it. I just, sorry, I just can't accept a traveling church or a trailer church. or I can't accept religion. 
I can't, I'm not an atheist either. I, I don't accept any of these, these ideologies. I don't accept ideology. Those are ideas. That's, word, that's where the word ideology comes from. It comes from ideas. It's movement of thought. It's thought. Mm. Ideas. And interestingly, idea comes from Greek and it means I see. See something on the outside. Right? But that, what I see on the outside, is uh, the seeing of that on the, what's on the outside is still just in my head formed as a representation of that what I see. It's still not that what I'm seeing. You know, I, I look at this ladder over there. Okay, it, it is still just a representation of that ladder. It's not really the ladder. It's a representation of pixels that my brain has formed in my occipital lobe. In the in the area that processes vision, the visual cortex, it creates together with the other formations, together with the neocortex, it creates a specific representation of that of that what I see. But that what I see in my brain is still thought. And it is still something that my brain is making. It's not reality. The latter may be completely different in reality. Okay. And we all go through life and we, we're thinking, we think that whatever we see or whatever we learned, whatever we understand or our world view that's the real deal, you know, that's like, that's factual, uh, that's concrete, and it is, you know, unchangeable and linear and so on. But, yeah, that's the field of reality, of our perception. That's not the field of truth. Truth may be completely different. And that is what people cannot put their minds into. And when they hear someone talk about this, they run very fast and they judge very, very quickly. They will quickly label me as whatever they label me, and they have labeled me many names. It's, it's easier. That's easier than facing these types of thoughts. That's easier than really leaning into it, as you know, that um, professor, Dr. Alan W. Anderson said at UC San Diego. He said the moment he really leans in to really hear the other person. Some kind of fear comes up. thought that was very courageous of him to talk about this. Very courageous. Very few people would ever admit there's some kind of fear going on. Men never, almost, like almost never, would almost never say that, you know, I, I'm afraid. Almost never. Except in Vietnam. So my my husband has a friend who has been there who was drafted and he told him what what that was like psychologically for these people some men called for their mother mama 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 help me 20 year old men big muscles and everything mama help me That's how bad the war is. But, you know, in society, uh, 
They say I'm the toughest guy. There is 50,000 people wanted to celebrate New Year's Eve with me. You better be grateful that I'm talking to you. <laughs> Who the fuck are you anyway? Be glad I'm top. Be glad, be, be glad me hung talking to you. <laughs> people talk to me like this on the internet. I don't understand why I never suggested to elicit anything from them, but they come up to me with these kind of things. And what I am observing is deep insecurity. I hear a kitty. I wonder where the cat is. Kitty, where are you? Mm. Where is that kitty? I hope she's not somewhere in the house. Papa dog doesn't tolerate cats in the house, so... A dog, yes, I know, because he wants to be our only child. Of course, um, jealousy and animals, they have some insecurities too, you know, particularly if they had been traumatized and, and if they had been handed over from one person to another, they want to stay, finally stay with the person they feel safe with, and they don't want another animal to come in. And, you know, you take that insecurity and you magnify it by thousands of times and you have humanity with all its intricate evasions and thought evasions and self-trickery and ego convolutions and it's a convoluted universe, the human brain, you know, was when we're dealing with insecurities and trauma and all of this. But no one can say to the other person, look, this is how I feel. I'm lonely or I'm afraid. Men can never say that I'm afraid. Boy, that would be so, that would feel like the death of the ego to say that. For us women, it's easy, you know, I'm afraid. Yeah, come big guy, come and help me. Come and save me. You know, I can't stand on my own two legs. I need a man in my life to lift me up and work and, and, and work as my crutch or something. No, <laughs> it shouldn't be that way. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be that way. And Paul told me something that really went on my nerves earlier. He said there was a 16-year-old girl on YouTube. I have to, yeah, I'm going to have to find this. And she said a vegan girl, and she said made a video why she doesn't have friends. I got to find that video. Probably can relate a lot. And there's this big fat Muslim guy commenting underneath and says, "Come to me. Come to my country, and let's have a whole lot of offspring." Boy, you know, if you already know me and you know how feminist I am, you can just imagine how that doesn't sit with me at all, how that burps up the wrong way, my goodness. I don't even know, I, you know, I don't even know what to say to that. It's like this is really, really, really beyond words. That is so incredibly regressive. Oh my gosh, it's like, poo, humans, you know, the Western world, how they have struggled to move forward. They struggled and struggled with their egos. The egos throwing them 
two steps back when they struggle another step forward and the ego comes and throws them two steps back again they have to like sissy fools try to mount up onto the mountain and and, and then they fall and it's like and, uh, but little by little against all odds they have made it to this level where we have feminism where we have freedom where we have freedom of mind and expression and then George W. Bush and Dick Cheney unleash those Middle Eastern and Middle Age regressed people into the Western world and like stirring up an ant's nest. Uh Barack Obama invites them and Angela Merkel and all of these people and Justin Trudeau and yes babies come to us we make we give you a uh, a trumpet celebration for coming to literally uh, for coming to our countries we we'll celebrate you yes come and rape our women and put a shadow on them and they find that very chic, you know, it's uh, because, hey, it's a little, it's something different, it's a new fad. They all jump on the bandwagon and they go, yeah, let me be raped. It's fantastic, you know, let me be brain raped and shadowed and muted, 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 a muted, mute, mute, mute. No, not with me, okay? Not with me, not with me. Medusa, Heoka, empath. Sorry, it's not gonna happen, okay? And yes, we are real women, and yes, we have an intellect, and yes, we can stand on our own legs. You better believe it. And yes, we are artists, and yes, we are free minds, and we stand for ourselves, and and our souls stand for themselves. And Papa Dog has a soul, just like I have a soul. He's an angel soul. He's he's one level above me in soul development. Yeah, you gotta you gotta swallow that baby. You gotta swallow that. You gotta swallow all of that. Take the Western pill, man, and wake up out of that unempowerment and empower yourselves and say no to violence and say no to Islam and Christianity and Judaism and all of these other miserable, miserable, miserable mind oppressions. Stand up and be you, angel souls and God souls. And there's one Buddha soul. And so many light workers out there. So many indigos, too. And they sit there and they suffer. And I say, I open my arms to you. And I say, I am here. Come in my arms. Come into my arms, baby bears. Come into my arms, Heokas and and Medusas and I, INFJs and all of you, all you introverted people and empath empathetic people and 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 compassionate people and animal lovers and. Don't let this weight of this monstrous world crush you. Don't let it crush you. Come to me, come to each other. I know people find me ugly and everything, but, um, you know, I offer it. I'm here, you know, I'm here for you. You don't have to give me a hug or anything, but I'm here for you mentally. And you know it. I'm here for you mentally. And you don't have to be crushed by anyone. I know that the the indigos, they suffer the most. That's like, that's sort of almost like, that's the pivotal soul state, you know. 
the light workers are under the radar the angels are over the radar and the indigos are right in that radar of the crushing world monsters world of stagnators and they suffer the most from it and so i know how that feels and that's why i say i'm here you know you don't have to suffer no need to suffer we have each other we can give each other comfort and that is so good to know that is so good to know i couldn't do it alone i could not do it without my friend barbara overseas who i talk to in email form she's an angel so she's above me mm. she's a blessing for my family and i'm so deeply grateful i'm so deeply grateful that there are those evolved souls here on this in this reality in this 3d reality that is so crushing that is that is so exhausting and so angry and always there's so much hurt and there's so much re underhanded retaliation also going on people are hurt and then they have to get even with the other person and they do it sometimes in, in a very backhanded way in a very backstabbing type of way I see that on Facebook all the time I wish I could help somehow but I don't know what to do but the best thing I can do is I give people facts I, I say to people this is where I am this is who I am this is I am fat I actually this is where I want to be you don't have to help me you don't have to tell me what to do you don't have to tell me, you don't have to give me beauty tips because this is where I am and this is where I want to be. Okay. And, uh, you know, these backhanded beauty tips, sort of like, you know, the implied message of you do not look good. Let me help you. Thank you. I don't need your help. I got that, I got that from men, particularly. I don't need your help. I don't need you to be my crutches for anything. I don't need you to be my guardians. I'm my own guardian. You better believe it. We, we're full of security. And if I had to fight someone off, you would, you would have to really run because you don't want my Medusa to come up. You really don't want that to come up. Because when that comes up, all hell will break loose. I promise that. Okay. I have seen, I've heard about a woman in Germany who fought off 10 men in a forest because she did karate. That's how powerful karate is. So, and it also works on an energetic level, and that's what I do. I do a lot of introspection and meditation. And when I paint, that's very, very much like a meditation. And there's an energy that comes up because when you are, when you meditate and bad feelings come up and you don't run away from them, you don't distract yourself away from it, you don't run off, then an energy starts to unfold like a flower and that's true empowerment when you don't run away from bad feelings or from whatever comes up you know we have all kinds we all have those feelings we all have jealousy we all feel rejected all the I feel rejected all the time hey I deal with it I move through bravely I move bravely through that through the thick bog that wants to swallow me up the thick bog of depression and and oppression and rejection and bullying I walk through it with a straight face and straight forward walking not sideways, not escape not using some 
rope to pull me out or to distract me or whatever. I walk through and I listen to Judy Krishnamurti because that's the truth. I work on my artwork. Yesterday I worked on my artwork for many hours and it's kind of exhausting because I have to use my arm. My <laughs> it uses a lot of muscle strength. You know, sometimes I have to rest my arms like oh, okay, let it rest. And then I pick my arm back up and I continue. And it's not easy because I have to use my muscle strength at the same time as I'm doing my nude work. Very minute work. It's this is not just some wishy washy uh, stick figure type of painting, you know, this is not just some, you know, some mosey around uh, whatever hippie type of hallucinogenic type of painting. They're all, it's, I'm not belittling this, it's good, it's all good. I, it's great if you can just paint it's freestyle, it's all good, you know. it's all good, really. But what I'm doing is my nude work. I work for months and months and months on one painting. Sometimes I work for two years on one painting because sometimes I have phases in between where I can't work because I'm too depressed. But I'm picking myself up right now and I'm painting. And yesterday I painted nonstop for several hours and it was very exhausting, but it was also very empowering because as I'm listening also to Judy Krishnamurti, and I allow the truth come in to my, my entire body like an elixir. It just flows completely through my entire body, through every vein and, and artery and capillary. It flows through. It feeds every cell of my body with truth. And it's very empowering because, because then I realize I don't need anything, really. I don't need anything. I don't need a, I don't need some some asshole jerk to to lift me up on my legs. I don't need um, and there are some very sweet guys on on YouTube oh, and on Facebook. So there, some of them are very sweet, you know. But um, but there's there's this one guy from from the East Coast who was not so sweet, and most of them are not sweet, you know, most of them. But it's also, you know, like I said before, it's it's out of unempowerment. It's they have to hide the fact that they are insecure. They have have to hide the fact that they're afraid. They have to hide the fact that that they really need a girlfriend desperately and and they ev they have to particularly hide the fact that they need a woman a real woman a real a real nurturing woman and a, a fat and chubby woman yes papa dog yes 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 papa dog so and that's even more embarrassing to admit that you know because that goes against the grain of society so that goes against Calvin Klein mind manipulation. So I don't know how much power he still has, but I see that people are still running that train. So yeah, you know that the noble, the noble sin train. We are noble and we are above anyone. And my girlfriend is thin because we are on top of everything. That's another idea that was implemented into your brain by Calvin Klein. Okay, it's not the truth. Okay, and yes, I can be fat and I can be intellectual. At the same time, that doesn't have to exclude one another. But society tells you, tries to implement these ideas into you. 
that. You know, if you want to be someone, you have to look like this or like that. You have to look like Angelina or Brad. And that's an idea. Okay, that is not a fact. That is not the truth. Okay, you can look how you look, actually. Believe it or not, you can look the way you look right now. Hmm? Many of you are not healthy, okay, with big beer bellies, drinking, and all of this. That's not healthy. That's not empowered. But stop looking down on the way you look and, and, and start being nice to yourselves. Be good to your bodies. Stop drinking. Stop beating yourself up or being afraid that, you know, if, if the woman rejects you, okay, then that be it. But you can still say to her, like, for example, if you really want uh, this, want a woman or you think she's, she might be, uh, be sort of, you know, pleasing in some way, then why don't you just be honest with her and go, hey, you know, I really like you. I wish you could be my girlfriend. But they can't say that because they're afraid to be rejected. But if you said that, women, they would be A, flattered. They would, they would also really appreciate the honesty. And they would definitely not reject you in a hurtful way. Yeah. And if they reject you, and most of them are not honest either, because humans aren't honest. Okay. But you will, they'll definitely not say something mean or so. You know. And maybe you, maybe the woman's lonely too, and she, maybe she'd like to hook up with you too. Yeah. I'm already married, so, you know, I'm, I'm not available. But there are many that are, many that would like a, a good-looking man. So, but it's always this insecurity that holds people back. And they feel like, and then if they hear someone talk about something that they didn't learn in school and they can't identify with like Johann Sebastian Bach for example or Leonardo da Vinci or Van Gogh or Raphael then they then they flee then they they they, they get real scared and they cower away and they think like oh no she's aristocratic she now I'm going to ridicule myself because I didn't learn any of this and what am I going to do now? And, and, and then they even, in, in real bad cases, they even twist it around just to look grand to themselves. They will say, oh, she's just full of shit, all of this stuff is just arrogant, that's uh, something of the elite and blah, 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 and, and I want nothing to do with this, and they're just trying to, you know, uh, do away with us, and they're just uh, going to whitewash everything, and they're blah, 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 blah. It's all mind chatter, tin hattery, delusional, uh, conspiracy, deluded, corporate, brainwashed stuff. All of this stuff, by the way, was put into the world by the corporate agenda to make people do put people into division within themselves and among each other and to create rifts in societies, to create fear, to make people buy more candles and more baths, liquids and <laughs> bath, bath salt and uh, drugs and whatnot. So it's a boosting economy to keep people divided. Believe, believe it or not, it is that's the case. That's what all these conspiracy theories are about. You know, instead of running away from you and Sebastian Bach, why don't you listen to it and let it sink into your brain and breathe it in? Let the let the 
the liquid of the music penetrate through your pores and into your skin and into your troubled brain and let it heal you so anyway that's what I wanted to say and that's what I needed to say and I wish you all a happy new year and peace peace say yes to peace okay take care